spread. Bear put spread The bear put spread is the opposite of the bull put spread discussed earlier. It is a vertical debit spread created by purchasing a put with a higher strike price and selling a put with a lower strike price. Both options have the same expiration month. As the name suggests, it is a bearish strategy and is used when the market is expected to fall, or to close below the strike price of the short put option, which is the point of maximum reward at expiration. The bear put spread is a popular strategy for a variety of reasons. For one, the sale of the short put will offset some of the risk of the long put strategy. In addition, the total investment is far less than that required to sell stock short. Finally, the maximum risk of a bear put spread is limited to the net debit of the trade. In this example, the strategist is bearish on energy stocks and sets up a bear put spread on the Select Sector Energy Fund XLE. The fund is trading near $50.25 a share in late November and the strategist expects energy stocks, led by falling crude oil prices, to experience a three-month period of weakness. As a result, a bear put spread is initiated with the purchase of the 10th of March 50 put options for $2.50 and the sale of the 10th of March 45 puts for $1. The cost of the trade is $1.50 per contract, or $1,500 total. Figure 6.7 shows that the risk profile for a bear put spread slants upward from right to left because the profits increase as the share price falls. Once XLE falls to the price of the short put, the trade reaches its maximum profit potential. The maximum profit potential is equal to the difference between the two strike prices minus the net debit, or $3.50 per contract $50 minus $45 minus $1.50. The maximum profit occurs when the short option is in the money. At that point, if the strategist is assigned the short put at $45 a share, the long put can be exercised at $50. The profit is $5 a contract, minus the net debit paid for the spread. If the price of the underlying stock rises to the strike price of the long put, the trade suffers its maximum loss. At that point, both options expire worthless and the strategist loses the initial net debit. So the maximum loss is equal to the cost of the trade, or $1,500. In sum, the strategist is 106THE index trading course. 107. Basic strategies using put options. Figure 6.7 XLE March Bear Put Spread Risk Graph Source, www.optionetics.com Platinum Risking $1,500 to make $3,500, which is a much healthier risk-reward ratio of more than 2 to 1. By spreading out the strike prices between the long and short options, it is possible to create greater risk-reward ratios. For example, buying the March 50 puts and selling the March 40 puts increases the ratio to almost 4 to 1. However, the chances of a move down to $40 a share is also less likely than a move down to $45. Nevertheless, when the strategist expects an aggressive move lower in the market or sectors, the bear put spread is a viable strategy that offers flexibility, limited risks, and large potential rewards. As usual, the movement in the price of the underlying index will determine the best exit strategy for the bear put spread. As noted earlier, if the strategist is correct and the price of the underlying asset falls, the short put could be assigned and can be covered by exercising the long put. In the XLE example, if the strategist is assigned the short put at $45 a share, the long put can be exercised at $50. The profit is $5 per contract, minus the net debit paid for the spread. The maximum profit is $350. However, many strategists will prefer to close out the spread rather than deal with assignment and exercise. So if the options are in the money near expiration, the two positions in the bear put spread are offset. Although this approach is not likely to yield the maximum potential profit, the results will be very close. The bear put spread breaks even when the price of the underlying asset is equal to the higher strike price put minus the net debit. If the price falls below the breakeven but above the strike price of the short put, the trade can be closed for a small profit. However, above the breakeven and below the strike price of the long option, the trade is likely to lead to a small loss. At that point, it can either be 1. closed out entirely, or 2. the long put can be offset while the short put expires worthless. If the price of the underlying asset rises above both strike prices, the trade is at risk of suffering its maximum possible loss, with both puts expiring worthless and the strategist losing the net debit paid for the spread. Put calendar spread The bear put spread works well when the strategist expects an aggressive move higher or lower, but markets don't always move vertically. 
In fact, many times, an index or sector can trade sideways or trend moderately one way or the other. In Chapter 5, we showed how a call calendar spread could be used to generate profits from a bullish trending market. Now let's consider the opposite with a bearish market and the put calendar spread. The put calendar spread involves the purchase of a long-term put and the sale of a shorter-term one. Both options have the same strike price. In order to profit, the strategist wants the longer-term option to retain its value or appreciate, while the short-term option loses value due to time decay. Since a volatile move higher or lower will work against this trade, the strategist generally wants sideways trading or a modest move to the downside when using put calendar spreads. Let's consider an example using the PHLX Bank Sector Index dollar $BKX. In mid-May, the strategist determines that the outlook for bank stocks is moderately bearish due to a recent rise in interest rates and signs of an economic slowdown. Profits throughout the sector are expected to stagnate and share prices will therefore flatline during the next few months, maybe even decline during the second half of the year. Consequently, when the PHLX Bank Sector Index hits 100 in mid-May, the strategist establishes a put calendar spread with the purchase of 5 BKX December 100 puts for $4.50 a contract and the sale of 5 July 100 puts for $2.25 a contract. The net cost of the spread is $1,125, $4.50 minus $2.25 times 5 times 100. The risk and reward of the calendar spread are both limited. The risk is limited to the net debit, or the cost of the trade. If the strategist is wrong and makes no effort to offset the position during the life of the contracts, both puts could expire worthless. Hence, if BKX climbs above the strike price of the put options, the net debit paid to enter the spread will be lost. 108 The Index Trading Course 109 Basic Strategies Using Put Options if the bank index plummets, however, the put calendar spread will also fall into the red because a tumble below the strike price of the short option will increase the odds of assignment at expiration BKX settles European style. In that case, the strategist will either 1. pay the difference between the strike price of the settlement value of the underlying index, or 2. exercise the long option to satisfy assignment. For instance, if BKX falls to $95 at expiration and the short put is assigned, the strategist suffers a 5-point loss on the short put. On 5 contracts, the loss totals $2,500. Although the long put has also appreciated in value, it is not enough to offset the loss from the short put. In sum, the strategist does not want to see an aggressive move higher or lower after entering a put calendar spread. Instead, the strategist hopes that the bank index will trade near 100 during the life of the short option. Figure 6.8 shows the risk graph of the BKX put calendar spread when the short option reaches expiration. Assuming BKX closes at exactly 100 when the July options expire, the short put expires worthless but the long put still retains much of its value. In this case, the spread reaches its maximum profit potential. Once the short option expires, the strategist has several courses of action from which to choose. If the price of the underlying index remains stable, the strategist might sell another put option after expiration of the Figure 6.8 BKX December July Put Calendar Spread Risk Graph Source, www.optionetics.com Platinum Initial Short Put However, if the underlying asset moves against the strategist during the life of the short put, the best approach is probably to exit the entire position when the short put has little time value remaining. Finally, if the shares tumble and the long put has significant time value, it is better to close the position rather than face assignment since the strategist will lose the time value that remains in the long contract. The strategist can also choose to do nothing if the short put expires worthless and simply hold a long put position basically converting the calendar spread to a long put. The resulting position will generate profits if the price of the underlying asset falls over the remaining life of the long put. Conclusion Successful options traders make money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways. Put options are often used in bearish or down markets. For example, investors often use puts to protect portfolios using the strategy known as the protective put. In this trade, the strategist has a position in the underlying asset, but buys puts as insurance in case the share price moves lower. In that case, the investor is using the puts as protection or as a hedge. When the strategist wants to profit from a short-term move lower in the market, long puts and bear call spreads make a lot of sense. Both offer limited risk and high rewards. However, the risks associated with long puts can be significant because a move in the wrong direction can result in a 100% loss of the initial investment. 
Time decay is also working against the long option position. Bear put spreads can be used to mitigate some of risk of time decay and or a wrong move in the market. In a trending market or one that is expected to move modestly higher or lower, the strategist can use bull put spreads or put calendar spreads. The bull put spread can be used when the option strategist wants to sell puts while limiting some of the risk of naked put selling. Calendar spreads, on the other hand, work better when the strategist expects the market to trend sideways or lower and wants the potential to profit from time decay. Once the short put has expired, this position can also benefit from a longer term move lower in the price of the underlying index. 110THE Index Trading Course 111 Chapter 7 Complex and Advanced Strategies in Options Parlance A complex trade is not one that is necessarily complicated or difficult to understand. Instead, it is a trade that involves more than one type of contract. There are numerous examples and several are covered in this chapter. Therefore, the reader should not be discouraged by the terms complex or advanced strategies. Now, one might ask, when do traders use more advanced strategies? As seen with the call and put examples, trades can be structured to profit if the underlying index moves up, down, or sideways. Ideally, the strategist will have strategies for every type of market environment in his or her trading arsenal. Complex and advanced strategies simply give traders more tools. Some strategies can generate profits regardless of market direction. In other words, it doesn't matter if the market moves higher or lower, what matters is the magnitude of the move. Examples include straddles, strangles, and backspreads, which are explored throughout this chapter. These trades work well when the strategist expects an explosive move higher or lower in the market or sector. In addition, we introduce three more advanced trades in this chapter, the collar, the diagonal spread, and the butterfly. These strategies produce profits in a range bound or sideways market. Straddles the long straddle is an option strategy employed when strategists expect an explosive move in the underlying asset but are unsure about the 112. The Index Trading Course. Direction. The trade is comprised of the simultaneous purchase of a call and a put using the same strike in the same expiration month. It is generally established using at the money options or options with strike prices as close to the price of the underlying index as possible. Since the long straddle involves the purchase of a long call and a long put, the cost of the double premiums is often high. Hence, the strategist must expect a large move in a stock to ensure a profit. When the actual direction of the move is uncertain, a long straddle can be used. If the price spikes higher, the call will begin to generate profits. In contrast, the put will increase in value if the price of the underlying asset falls. The long straddle is a limited risk, unlimited reward strategy. The maximum risk is the total debit paid to enter the trade, or the cost of the put and the call. The maximum profit is unlimited as the underlying asset moves higher. The profit to the downside, from the put, is limited by a move by the underlying asset to zero. The breakevens are computed by adding the cost of the double premiums to the strike price for the upside breakeven. The downside breakeven is equal to the strike price minus the cost of the trade. Let's see how this trade can work in real life. During the month of August 2004, the strategist looks at the PHLX Gold and Silver Mining Index dollar Zhao and it appears that the sector might be due for a big move in one direction or the other, but it isn't clear whether that move will be higher or lower. So the strategist sets up a long straddle with the gold index trading near 85.75. The strategist decides to buy 5 Zhao December 85 puts for $7 each and 5 Zhao December 85 calls for $7.50. The total cost of the trade is $7,250, or $7 plus $7.50 times 5 times 100. The upside breakeven at expiration is equal to the double premium, $14.50, of the options plus the strike price, or $99.50, $85 plus $14.50. The downside breakeven is simply the strike price minus the double premium, or $70.50, $85 minus $14.50. If Zhao rises above 99.50 or falls below 70.50 by expiration, the trade will make money. The risk-reward of the long straddle is plotted in figure 7.1. The biggest loss would occur at expiration if Zhao settles at 85 and both the put and call expire worthless. The maximum profit potential is theoretically unlimited as the index moves higher, and is limited to the index falling to zero on the downside. Since the trade is entered in August and the options expire in December, it has approximately four months to play out. 
In most cases, the long straddle is not held until expiration and therefore the gold index will not necessarily need to rise above or below the 113. Complex and Advanced Strategies Figure 7.10 Gold Ounces December Long Straddle Risk Graft Source www.optionetics.com Platinum Breakevens to make money, the faster it moves in one direction, the better. For example, if the index rallies 10% during the first week, the profit from the call will probably be enough to yield a profit on the trade. In this example, the index did rally. Less than one month later, Zhao was trading near 103 and the call was bid at $19. At that point, the call option alone was worth more than the $14.50 paid to establish the trade. Obviously, the put had lost most of its value. The success of the straddle depends on identifying an explosive index or market and then entering the trade before the move gets underway. The exit is equally important. If the underlying asset falls below the lower breakeven price, the strategist can close the put position for a profit. If the index stays between the two breakevens and within a trading range, the trade will result in a loss. Therefore, the strategist will want to consider closing out the position when the price of the underlying asset does not move. In addition, since time decay is a killer during the last 30 days of an option's life, the long straddle should usually be closed out between 30 and 45 days prior to expiration. However, if the underlying asset price rallies above the upside breakeven, the strategist is in the profit zone again and can close the call for a profit and simply hold the put for a possible reversal in the index. 114. Strangles. The index trading course. Strangles are quite similar to straddles, except the choice of strike prices is quite different. A straddle uses at the money options while the puts and the calls in strangles are out of the money. Since the options are out of the money, strangles are usually much cheaper than straddles, which is why many options strategists prefer strangles. The difference, however, is that the area of maximum risk is larger because there is a greater chance that both the puts and calls expire worthless. Let's create an example, again using the PHLX Gold and Silver Mining Index trading near 85.75. The strategist decides to purchase 5 Zao December 80 puts for $4.50 each and 5 Zao December 90 calls for $5.50. The total cost of the trade is $5,000, $4.50 plus $5.50 times 5 times 100. Recall that in our straddle, which involved the December 85 puts and December 85 calls, the cost of the trade is $7,250. Therefore, employing a strangle is a less expensive alternative. The upside breakeven at expiration is equal to the strike price of the call plus the double premium paid for the options, or 190 plus 10. The downside breakeven is simply the strike price of the put minus the double premium, or 70, 80 to 10. If the Zao rises above $100 or falls below $70 at expiration, the trade makes money, which is relatively similar to the straddle C figure 7.2. Figure 7.20 Gold Ounces December Strangle Risk Graft Source, www.optionetics.com Platinum. Like the straddle, the strangle is a limited risk, unlimited reward strategy that relies on a strong move in the underlying security. If it doesn't move, then the trade will begin to see losses due to time decay. This problem is exacerbated by the fact that there are two long options that are both losing value. In our example, as long as the Zao trades between the strike prices of 80 and 90 at expiration, the trade suffers its maximum possible loss. With the straddle, the maximum potential loss occurred at 85, which is the strike price of both the put and the call. In sum, although the strangle is cheaper, the odds of incurring the maximum potential loss at expiration are greater. However, just as with the straddle, strategists will generally not hold the strangle until expiration. Instead, the strategist will bank profits if the Zao makes a significant move higher or lower within the first two or three months after establishing the trade. If it falls below the lower breakeven price, the strategist can close the put position for a profit. Or, if the underlying asset price rallies above the upside breakeven, the strategist can close the call for a profit. If the index stays between the two strike prices and within a trading range, the trade will result in a loss. Therefore, the strategist will want to consider closing out the position if the underlying asset does not begin to see movement in one direction or the other. Since time decay will very negatively impact the position closer to expiration, the strategist will usually want to close the position between 30 and 45 days prior to expiration. Understanding delta when creating straddles and strangles, the trade can either be neutral or have a bullish or bearish bias.
In order to understand if the position is truly neutral, the strategist can turn to one of the risk measurements called the Greeks. The Greek delta probably the most fundamental of these measurements and is the first that needs to be mastered by every beginning options trader. Complex and advanced strategies 115 What are the Greeks? Options and other trading instruments have a variety of risk exposures that can vary dramatically over time or as markets move. Greeks are essentially a set of measurements that explore the risk exposures of a specific options trade. The Greeks in respect to option trading include gamma, vega, theta, and delta, each one representing a different variable relative to option pricing. Continued. 116. The Index Trading Course. What are the Greeks? Continued. Each risk measurement is named after a different letter in the Greek alphabet, Vega is not actually a Greek letter, but it is used in this context anyway. In the beginning, it is important to be aware of all the Greeks, although understanding delta is the most crucial to trading success. Each of the terms defined here has a specific use in day-to-day -day trading. Delta. Change in the price of an option relative to the change of the underlying security. Theta. Change in the price of an option with respect to a change in its time to expiration time value. Vega. Change in the price of an option with respect to its change in volatility. Gamma. Change in the delta of an option with respect to the change in price of its underlying security. Delta is a measure of the change in the price of an option relative to the price change of the underlying asset. For instance, strategists purchase a call option on a stock because they expect that stock to rise. There is a distinct relationship between the price paid for the option, the current premium reflected in the market, and the price of the underlying stock. The delta factor addresses the question, how much does the option value change for a move in the underlying asset? For instance, if the stock's price increases by $1, will the premium of that option increase by $1? The delta factor is calculated by dividing the amount of price difference of the option by the amount of price difference in the underlying stock. For example, if the price of the stock option increased by 20 cents when the stock price went up 40 cents, you would have a delta factor of 0 0.50. This is determined by dividing 0 0.20 by 0 0.40. A delta of 0 0.50 indicates that the option price will increase at half the rate of the stock price. A call option with a delta of 0 0.50 is common when an option is very close to being at the money. As the call moves in the money, the delta will increase. A deep in the money option will have a delta approaching 1.00 and will move almost one for one with the movement of the underlying asset. The delta is never greater than 1.00. In contrast, put options have negative deltas because they decrease in value as the stock rises. The greater the delta factor, positive or negative, the more expensive the option and the higher the loss can be for buyers. Many speculators prefer to use out of the money options because they are cheaper. 117. Complex and advanced strategies. However, the delta will also be lower and the option will see a smaller point change for each point change in the underlying asset. Straddles and strangles are generally created to be delta neutral. For example, the delta of the at the money call will equal plus 0.50 and the at the money put will have a delta of minus 0.50. If the strategist is using the same number of puts and calls, the positive and negative deltas will offset each other, leading to a total position delta of zero, a delta neutral trade. Similarly, when creating a strangle, the deltas should offset each other for the position to be truly neutral. For instance, if the strategist creates a strangle and the call has a delta of plus 0.50 and the put has a delta of minus 0.30, the overall delta is 0 0.20, 0 0.50 plus minus 0.30 equals 0.20. The strangle will then have a directional bias that is bullish. It will increase in value by 0.20 for every one point move higher in the underlying asset and fall in value by 0.20 for every one point drop in the underlying asset. Ultimately, if the price of the underlying asset continues to fall, the puts delta will begin to increase and the calls delta will decline. It might move toward delta neutrality through time, but the position is not delta neutral at the time that it is established. There is nothing wrong with directional straddles and strangles, but the strategist should understand when the position has a bias one way or the other. Determining a position's overall delta is an easy way to find out. Short straddles and strangles. Some newsletter writers and